In this video, you'll learn about what I consider to be the biggest problem with e-commerce entrepreneurs today, and more importantly, what to do about it. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. Now, the biggest problem that I see with brand new e-commerce entrepreneurs is that they don't spend enough time on product differentiation. They'll use tools like Jungle Scout or Longtail Pro to find a profitable niche that is not that competitive. But then they'll go out and sell the exact same product as everyone else. Now, people who find good arbitrage opportunities this way will often do well for a short period, but it's just a matter of time until copycats and competitors eventually eat away at their margins. And because there's no brand recognition or a solid foundation, there's nothing they can do to stop prices from spiraling down to nothing. Now, when it comes to running a successful e-commerce business in the long term, you are destined to fail unless you can find a way to stand out among your competition. And the only way to survive is to establish a brand and a property that people trust. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about six ways to do exactly that. So strategy number one, use content to establish your identity. Now, all the successful e-commerce business owners that I know are moving towards a content first strategy with their shops. In other words, they're using interesting and eye-catching content to introduce customers to their brand and then sell to them on the back end. Now, Disney is a master of this strategy. Now, do you think that any sane Chinese person would buy six overpriced princess dresses without any hesitation? Are people normally willing to pay 20 bucks for cheap, flimsy t-shirts that usually cost two bucks to manufacture in China? No way. But the only reason that I willingly buy from Disney is because they have sucked me into their content. Their stuff is so good that my kids watch their movies 20 times each. So when the holidays roll around, I'm forced to spend my money hand over fist to buy some imaginary blonde Norwegian ice witches clothing. Now, when it comes to selling online, just because you've sourced a profitable product to sell on Amazon or your online store does not necessarily mean that you'll be able to maintain your profitability in the long run. And just because you've slapped your brand on a product means nothing unless you work hard to make your brand actually resonate with your customer. So how exactly do you make your brand resonate with your customer without starting your own movie studio? After all, not everyone can produce Disney quality content, but the good news is that you don't have to go that far to make a difference. It's actually the little things that matter. Now, gaining the mind share of your customer starts with going above and beyond to educate the customer about your products and your services. And here are some quick and dirty examples of how we do this with our online store. First off, in our online wedding linen shop, we offer free tutorials on how to make arts and crafts with the products that we sell. So for example, a popular craft on our blog is how to make wedding dress hanky favors. And thousands of brides have found this craft either through Pinterest or Google and then go on to buy our handkerchiefs. We also have popular wedding tutorials on how to wrap your bouquet with a monogrammed wedding handkerchief, which is a big hit as well. And in many cases, we are able to grab a customer's email address and then send them an automated email sequence, which introduces our company. And in the sequence, we emphasize how we're a small mom and pop shop and share our story about how and why we started our business. And customers who read about our story are much more inclined to buy from us. In providing them with free craft ideas for their wedding, they feel like they already are getting something for free, even if they don't end up buying anything. And at the very least, they'll tell their friends about us. Now, the key to differentiating your business starts with content. So make sure you take the time to be helpful to your customers and humanize your company. And psychologically, they will feel obligated to buy from you even if your prices are slightly higher. Now, the next way to differentiate yourself is to sell unique products. And even if you're making a decent profit now, selling the exact same products as your competitors leaves you vulnerable to a price war in the future. As a result, you should always have a long-term goal of selling unique items that nobody else sells. So for example, you would be surprised at how many products sold overseas are completely unavailable in your home country. So find out what these products are and import them yourselves. And if you are creative, invent your own products or add value to existing products. Scour the three-star reviews on Amazon for goods you wanna sell and then fix the problems that customers are complaining about. Because remember, the uniqueness factor of your product doesn't have to be dramatic. Like Ryan Moran, who I interviewed in episode 36 of my podcast, wanted to sell yoga mats online. And after studying the negative reviews on Amazon, he discovered that the current mats on the market were all too thin. So what did he do? He fabricated a significantly thicker yoga mat and made millions. Now, another way to do it is to provide great customer service. And to be quite frank, these days, providing great customer service is par for the course. So when I mention customer service here, 
I don't just mean being nice to customers and being generally helpful. The type of customer service that I'm referring to is the no holds barred, go totally out of your way type of helpfulness, even if it means that it will take a tremendous amount of your time. So let me give you an example of what I mean by no holds barred customer service through a personal experience of my own. Now, a couple years ago, my wife and I were shopping for embroidery machines. And the shop that we ultimately bought from went out of their way to show us how to use their machines and even gave us a loaner to try at home for a couple of weeks. They also saw that we were a bit overwhelmed by the multitude of accessories that we had to buy that they decided to give us all the accessories for free. And compared to other shops that we visited, this store provided a level of help that went way beyond the call of duty. And as a result, we are now a customer for life and will forever recommend this store to others. Now, whenever we need anything related to embroidery, we always buy all of our products there regardless of price. Now, the loss that they took by giving us the free accessories have been more than made up for through our devotion and years of purchases. And yes, we became that attached. And it's no wonder that this shop is one of the top embroidery machine dealers in the US. Now, another way to differentiate yourself is to provide a comprehensive selection. Now, even if you decide to sell non-unique products online, you can still set yourself apart with what I call the one-stop shop strategy. Choose a specific category of products and try to be the most comprehensive seller in that niche. And customers are much more likely to buy from a store that specializes in what they are looking for. But when you use this strategy, it's important that you don't spread yourself too thin. Make sure you choose no more than a couple of categories to focus on and then do the best job that you possibly can with it. Looking around the web, I see many online stores selling a wide variety of random items. And the most successful stores are the ones that have a cohesive theme. The other strategy you should take is to tell a story. Now, one of the best ways to gain mind share for your business is by telling a story. And stories are so powerful because they create a lasting image in the minds of your customers and then frame your business in a positive light. So for example, when I created mywifeputterjob.com, instead of putting up a generic make money blog, I decided to tell the story about how my wife and I created our online store so she could quit her job and stay at home with the kids. Now take a quick moment to think about that. Would you be more likely to remember a generic money-making blog or a blog written from the perspective of a husband-wife team trying to make ends meet for their kids? Here's another example. A long time ago, when we were shopping for baby slings, there were so many different stores hawking different slings on the market that it was impossible to choose. But after visiting over 20 online shops, we were especially drawn to this one store owned by a woman with 12 kids. That's right, 12 kids, that's not a joke. And her selling point was that between raising her 12 kids, she had experience with almost every single product in her entire store and that she only carried products that she had personally used and recommended. And her story immediately gave her additional credibility and we felt comfortable purchasing from her online store. Now, the exact way you differentiate your store from the competition is ultimately up to you. But before you invest the necessary hard work to open up an e-commerce business, make sure that you find a way to stand out from your competition. Make sure that you have a unique value proposition for your business. After all, if your store isn't selling anything special, then don't even bother launching it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you like what you saw, there's actually a lot more where that came from if you subscribe to my channel below. And if you are interested in learning how to sell physical products online, then click over here and take my free six day mini course where I'll walk you through everything that you need to know to get started in e-commerce. Thanks for watching.